Hey guys, welcome back to Not One Videos. In my last video, you will have seen me make the awesome Smaug Bursting Forth from Erebor project. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to turn these weird noodle lights into the big ball of flame that came forth from his mouth. So I've got a bunch of components sitting in front of me, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I put this together to make that project. Because the project isn't even made yet. It's sitting right here, and I'm about to do it right now. So hopefully this goes really well <laughs> and I get two videos out of this instead of one. Okay, to achieve the fireball effect, I used exactly what you can see on the screen right now. I have a basic breadboard for helping me solder together my different components. I have a Wemos D1 mini module and this is kind of the brain for the project. This will be what is gonna control the flickering of the lights. I also have the Canavern Castle board from Terrainetronics. All of the signals that come from the Wemos come into here and control what you want to control, like motors, etc. For me, in this case, it's going to be these noodle lights. I then have my connectors, which is going to create my stack between these two boards. And I have a reed switch board and a reed switch from Terrainetronics. And the first part of the process is we are going to have to stack together the Wemos D1 Mini and the Canavern Castle board like so, just so that they can have a little bit of a conversation and make this thing happen. And of course for that, we are going to need a soldering iron. No! It's not that bad. Get over it guys. Sometimes we have to do a little bit of soldering. Let's get this stacked up. And for that, we're gonna need our breadboard. First, we're gonna move aside the bits that we don't need. To begin, I've got two sets of eight-legged mail connectors. And I am going to simply place them into the breadboard with the correct spacing for my project. If you've got your connectors lined up properly, your Wemos board should just slip right onto the top and you are ready to solder. You might also want to keep a damp sponge on hand. I don't have a damp sponge at the minute, so I've just got a bit of damp kitchen roll just to keep my soldering iron nice and clean during the process. To solder up one of the pins, you simply touch your soldering iron to the pin for about two seconds and then introduce some solder. You then have to repeat that process 15 more times before you're ready to stack your Canavern Castle board. And then we're gonna do more soldering. So let's get soldering. That didn't actually take half as long as I was expecting to get that first set done. I'm just working on the last one right now. Okay, let's flip this thing over and connect the Navron Castle board. Perfect. Okay, so we have our Wemos board connected up with the male pins and now we need some female pin connectors that fit into the male pins like so. On top of this, we're gonna put our Canavan Castle board like so, and because we use the breadboard, everything is going to line up perfectly. So now that all of the pins are soldered on both boards, I should be able to just pull the boards apart like so, and put them back together again, which is the case, and that now means that we can solder in our mail connectors so that we connect our noodle lights to the Canavan Castle board. To solder these though, I'm gonna use the breadboard once again. Perfect, so now I have my Wemos board that has 16 pins to connect to my Canavan Castle board, like so. And I have my six pins that are going to connect to my three noodle LED lights. So speaking about the brain in the project, the code that we are using is the exact same flicker pattern that we used in the Balrog project that I did a few months ago. If you're interested in using this code for your own project, there is a video by Terraintronics in the description below this video explaining exactly how to load the code onto your Wemos D1 Mini using the Terraintronics code loading software. There's also a link to the new updated code specifically for this Smaug project. 
The only difference is, is that Daffod has slightly changed the code so that we can include the use of our read switch, which we're gonna wire up next. This is your standard read switch. And for anyone who doesn't know, a read switch is basically a glass tube which holds two wires apart like so. When a magnet passes over the top, the two wires connect together like this, completing your circuit. By including a reed switch in your circuit, it enables you to do all kinds of cool things like adding smoke to your terrain and adding lights to your terrain simply by the use of a magnet. And often I do that in the base of my minis. In this project, however, I've included my magnet in the key to Erebor, meaning that the key to Erebor is what makes smog wake up and breathe fire. Reed switches are quite delicate, so when it comes to bending the legs, you're going to want to pinch just beside the glass bar like so, and bend the leg like so. This way you can bend your wire without breaking your glass bulb. You can then easily put your reed switch into the reed switch board from Terrainetronics. Once your reed switch is in place, you can carefully turn over the board and solder your legs. Then trim off the excess just like so. We're then going to attach a wire wrapping wire here and here. To do this, I first put a blob of solder on each pad. Then when I want to attach my wire, I simply heat up the solder and let the wire fall into the solder like so. And that's our reed switch board all connected up. Now all we have to do is connect it into the Canaveral Castle board. We're going to attach our reed switch here and here. We're going to use some of the pins on the motor one output, but Daffod's code turns those signals into inputs. So we're hacking it a little bit. The reed switch will short these pins together when a magnet is present, pulling the input pin to the ground. Daffod's code says, if this pin is ground, switch on the LEDs. So for my project, I've left a nice long piece of wire for my reed switch. I then strip the end of both wires ready for some wire wrapping. Just for anyone who's new to this and hasn't seen any of my previous videos on wire wrapping, you simply put your wire into the end of your wire wrap tool, place the end of the tool onto the desired pin that you want to attach your wire to and twist. You then repeat the same step on the outside pin on the right hand side. Now that this reed switch is attached, when it's triggered with a magnet, it will tell the Wemos board to start running the program for the lights, which I'm about to attach right now. Make sure you test that your noodle lights are working before you attach them to the project. And you can also figure out which end is the negative and which end is the positive with a coin battery. On a coin battery, normally the flat bottom of the battery is the positive. On this part of the Canavan Castle board depends on your outside edge or the five volts. So these three are your positives. Obviously I'm using red wire for the positive and black wire for the negative. I am going to use quite a long piece of wire for both of these connections because of getting in behind the project. I want to make sure I have enough. Once I put it all together, I can always cut a bit off and rewrap it if I need to. Then of course we're going to do the exact same on the other side with some black wire for the negative. And just as a precaution, I am including some heat shrink on the end of each light bulb just to help avoid any short circuits. If you're new to wire wrapping and you want to learn a little bit more, you can watch this video up in the top left hand side of the screen right now. So my electronics videos on this channel have actually become some of my most popular videos. So if anyone has any questions about things that they would like to know about or how you'd like us to figure some things out, Myself and Daffid, we talk on a regular basis. We come up with ideas and we brainstorm. So if there's anything you would like to see us try, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, I wanna show you a little update on how I am powering my circuits. You might remember in my previous LED flames video that I used a phone battery pack and it kept switching off. Stay on, stay on. No. <gasps> so I had to include a resistor. With these USB chargeable battery packs, that problem is eliminated and they are also a lot cheaper. If you're interested in these, you can pick them up at Terrainetronics. Okay, so I'm actually talking to Daffod right now. Say hello, Daffod. Hello. <laughs> so Daffod's there. How do you do? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, hello and hello, hello. 
we have just tried to figure out whether or not we can get the read switch working. Bing! Yes! Daff it! Daff it! It's working? It's working? Oh, it's working good. Ah, we have a project. And I now have to turn this into a ball of flames, which we are going to do by executing the quite fiddly process of passing the LEDs through the dragon's mouth without breaking them. I left the LEDs on just to make sure that I was not creating any shorts or loose connections. Once the LEDs were through, I super glued some gauge 9 aluminium wire into the back of the dragon's throat and used it kind of like a scaffolding to attach my LED noodles to. Now I find that the coating on the LED noodles kind of rejects super glue, so I find it far easier to wrap the red and black wires around the aluminium structure and then super glue it after. Once I was satisfied that my LED noodles were sitting in the position that I liked, I used some polyester fiber, also known as pillow stuffing, please don't tell my wife, to cover the LED and the aluminium structure, making sure to use enough fiber so that you don't see the LED noodles clearly, but the light still passes through effectively. Once I was happy with the shape, I then used some masking tape to cover Smaug's head so I didn't get him covered in paint in the next step. So I used my airbrush here, starting with a yellow base coat, lightly covering the polyester, and then layering some red to give the flame some variation that makes it look like a hot flame. And finally, a very light dusting of black to give the flame that smoky look. Don't worry if you don't have an airbrush, you could easily get the same effect with acrylic spray can paints. But the, the thing that makes the ball of flames most effective is this. It's the electronics that goes within the ball of flames. And, you know, not very many people are making these noodle lights flicker. That's a thing. This is literally exactly what I wanted to happen. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe and ask any questions that you might have in the comments below. You can also check out the full build for this Smaug project or my Balrog vs Gandalf project by clicking one of these videos.